Hi, I'm Luke Walton, and you're watching the Sports Desk, Channel 3. The North High Saxons are definitely bringing the pomp and circumstance to this Crosstown rival game. The tension is pretty palpable on the field. We'll tell you who wins at the end of the show, of course. But if you need to relax, why not try some golf? The city of Torrance is bringing you great lessons at the Los Verdes Golf Course. Let's go ahead and take a look. Golf is a game made for only individual play, right? Well, unless you only play by yourself, most of us tend to enjoy it in a social yet competitive atmosphere. And the city of Torrance is offering a new place to better your swing or just learn the basics right up on the peninsula. And the classes are taught by 30-year veteran instructor Mike Barroza of the Los Verdes Golf Course. Uh, with, uh, we have six classes. On the first class, I cover basic fundamentals, going over uh, rules and etiquette. Uh, then the next two lessons, we're here on the range hitting, and I help each golfer individually. Uh, the fourth lesson, we're on the putting green, going over the most important part of the game, putting. Uh, then the fifth lesson, we're doing <laughs> pitching and chipping. The last lesson, uh, we're hitting with the woods. So with the beautiful view and individual attention, this sounds like just the place I need to go to get better on my golf game. That's right, you can go take lessons at the Los Verdes Golf Course. Classes are available, don't forget, Sunday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Just give a phone call to 310-377-7370 for more information. It's now time to meet and greet with the Saxon cheerleaders. Why don't you ladies tell me a little bit about what it's like being a North High Saxon cheerleader? It's awesome. We have the best spirit in all of Torrance, and we're always cheering on our Saxons. Woo! <laughs> So why don't you tell me, Sammy, a little bit about what it's like being on the ground, looking up at the school and knowing that you're help making the whole football night experience. It's a very, you feel the adrenaline and it's really exciting because you get to be a part of pumping up the crowd to make your football team do better. We, we did a dance shut it down for third quarter and we use our dances to pump up the crowd and kind of get out there what we do and dance. We like to dance. I'm hoping that you can explain to me and the Sports Desk viewers about no Fifi, no Fefe. Cassandra, can you please fill us in? Well, no Fefe means um, no fear in Samoan, and a former um, team mom actually came to a team dinner recently, and she was giving the guys a pep talk just to get them pumped up for the game, and she mentioned no Fefe, which means no fear, and it's kind of like the, the guys have been taking it and using it like to pump them up for the year. We've seen the action around the game, Next, the Battle of the North versus the West. The Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America has important information for the millions of people with asthma. You may not know there are two main causes of asthma symptoms, airway constriction you feel and inflammation you may not feel. Learn how to better manage your asthma by treating both main causes of asthma symptoms. Treating both causes can help prevent symptoms before they even start. And preventing symptoms could mean a smoother ride. For more information, go to asthma.com. We're the North High Saxon cheerleaders, and you're watching the Sports Day! Welcome back. We have what you've been waiting for, folks. That's right, the results of the West High North Torrance game. And it was pretty exciting. And I'm here with Sports Desk reporter Phil Stafford. Phil, it was a great game. It, it really was. It, uh, it came down to the end there. The Saxons didn't really pull away until the fourth quarter. Ended up being 21-3. We saw a new star emerge for the Saxons, that being the wide receiver, Michael Thompson. But why don't we go ahead and jump right into the highlights. The Saxons trying to break above 500 in their final non-conference matchup of the season. We start in the first quarter. Barry Thomas of West loses the ball, and it's recovered by Keith Thompson for the Saxons. They get the ball on the 35. On the fourth down try, it's Jonathan Garcia finds Mike Thompson out on the flat for the first down. Next set of downs, fourth down once again. The handoff to Thompson. Once again, he breaks out to the right. He's got open room, and he gets in for the score. Thompson, with the 15-yard run for the touchdown, gives the Saxons the early 7-0 lead. Next offensive possession for the North Saxons. Ryan McDaniel just can't get anything going all night. Only 79 yards in the competition. 
Two plays later, Jonathan Garcia looking downfield into quadruple coverage. He's picked off. That's Joey Notch for West, and he'll return it to the 30. The Warriors started eight of their nine drives in their own territory. Here, Austin Waters finds the big tight end, Josh Giardini, for the first down, and that takes us into the second quarter. McDaniels feeling the pressure. He makes the big hit on defense for a loss, and the Saxons hold the Warriors to a field goal attempt. The 32-yarder nailed by Cody Thornton, and that gives West their first points on the board, 7-3. The ensuing kickoff is returned by Mike Thompson. Don't forget that name because he's got moves and he's got room to run. He's only got the kicker to beat and he can't shake him, but he's brought down at the 40. Great position for the Saxons to start the drive. They elect with the option over to Ryan McDaniel on the touchdown alley. He's got room and he'll take it in for the score. But don't celebrate just yet. This one's called back for holding. The Saxons are forced to punt and they miss a scoring opportunity. Later on in the quarter with the same score, the blue and white trying to put points on the board before half. Jonathan Garcia picked off again, this one by Chris Wardar. On the next drive though, Garcia makes up for it with the pick himself. He returns this one all the way inside of the West 35. The Saxons come away with no points and we head into halftime seven to three. We knew at halftime it was it was more just you know us beating ourselves a little bit and uh, you know staying under control and, and, and keeping our cool, keeping our heads and, and not doing those little things, backing us up offensively was the main thing. And uh, you know we, we responded. It took us a while, but we finally responded. We go to the third quarter. It's Ryan McDaniel just not getting through the line, can't create any space. On the other side, it's Barry Thomas, the sophomore, finding a couple gaps, but the North defense still holding strong and forcing another punt. Third and 25, Jonathan Garcia looking down the sideline, and he's got Daniel Smith, the senior wideout, for the first down. But this one is called back. Another flag on the play. A legal man downfield is called, and the Saxons lose another opportunity. We go to the fourth, and deep inside their own territory, the North Saxons rely on the Wildcat and Mike Thompson. They let me do the Wildcat. It's something we practice and practice a lot. And uh, yeah, coach let me do it, so I ran the ball. Well, made some big plays. <laughs> my line block, that's all That's all matter. I like holding on to the ball right now. It's my, it's my thing. <laughs> Down by 11 after the 85-yard run by Thompson. The Warriors try and switch quarterbacks to Joey Notch, but the Saxon defense still holding strong and coming up with the sack. In the fourth quarter, still McDaniel trying to get something going. He relieves some aggression there. Pushes one defender down. He's got the open lane, 56 yards. McDaniel takes it all the way for the touchdown. That was all me relieving aggression. I just have to thank my line for that one, though. They yeah. stayed on their blocks like I told them till the end. That would secure the win for the Saxons, but not before they had overcome 17 penalties for 151 yards. 21 to three is the final North over West. We came out a little bit flat, and we're not as excited as we expected to be. Uh, it's a good crosstown rivalry, so you, you know usually we are, and we were fired up all week for it. But uh, you know it wasn't exactly the start we wanted, and you got to give them credit. They, they they started off the game really well and shot our offense down, and we made some mistakes, which didn't help as well. Uh, but uh, in the end, we got to be happy with the result. My teammates stepped it up. I wasn't stepping up this game. I didn't come out physically and mentally prepared, and I paid for it every down. And I just have to thank Mike Thompson, the line, and they just did everything to help me out. We played harder than we were in the first half, and everybody just got their push off their man, and we played hard. With a 3-2 and two record, the Saxons now start league play this week when they host Centennial. It's exciting. It's, uh, it's you know, part of our thing's gone. we got brand new goals and, and, and things we're shooting for, so one, one at a time also, and uh, we'll get ready for Centennial, and we'll see. It'll be an exciting league experience. Reporting for the Sports Desk, I'm Phil Stafford. Hey, thanks to Phil Stafford for that exciting play-by-play. -play. And Ryan McDaniel and Mike Thompson, congratulations on a great game. Barry Thomas West had 24 carries and a rush for 108 yards. North finds himself at 3-2 and two and West at 1-4. and four. League play begins for both next week. Let's take a look at some other matchups. South played very well against Palos Verdes, winning 43-15, bringing their record to 4-1. Dylan Redondo's got to be breaking some records with 16 carries, 190 yards, and four touchdowns. Eric Capicchione, seven carries, 62 yards, and two touchdowns. 
Dylan Tobin and Capicone had interceptions for the Spartans, and Ryan Doby and Brent Malone must be mentioned. They came up with two big fumble recoveries. And now we'll move on over to look at the score of the Bishop Montgomery Mary Star game. Congrats to Bishop Montgomery as they bring their record to 5-2 overall and 2-0 and in league with a big win over Mary Star, 49-21. And running back Nolan Plummer had an unbelievable game with 237 all-purpose yards and two touchdowns. Plummer also had an interception and 165 yards alone in the first quarter. Miles Austin also returned an interception for a touchdown in the second half. Bishop Montgomery will host Cantwell Sacred Heart for their next home game, and the sports desk will be out on location, so be sure to say hello. And big whoop out to the Tartars for a tie against Irvine, bringing their record to 1-3-1 and one overall. Tyrone Taylor's 46-yard touchdown in the second half sparked the Tartars into gear. Dylan Abel gave the Tartars the second TD, and Adam Dahl was good for the two-point conversion to tie the game. Torrance will see South for their next game. That's it for the prep football scores. Now is the time of the show for you to let us know something we don't know. Give us a story idea or help us with stats. You can call us at 310-618-5762 or feel free to give us an email at thesportsdesk at torrentsca.gov. Watch all of our shows from years past on torrentsca.gov and all the shows from the year 2010 are on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching this edition of the Sports Desk. Next week, we'll have a lot more coming your way. So until next time, have a good time, Torrance.